guys, never here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So the last place we left off, Verissa had just given us a recipe to, in order to prepare for Ranek's arrival because we're gonna have a nice big feast. And oh boy, I can't wait. We're gonna get our wolf back. Oh, mm, it's gonna be fantastic. I wonder what kind of news he'll bring of the outside world. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back in. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes, and let's. Uh, jump right in, like I just said. Okay, here we go. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's back up a little bit. Okay. Yep. Tomorrow is going to be a great day. And with that thought, I snuggle into my blankie, taking last sniffs of my Rannick substitute. Tomorrow, I'll have the real deal beside me. As I drift off, I'm trying to recall the recipe to make sure it'll stay with me when I wake up. Fry some apples in the butter? No. Uh, first, soak the apples. Remove the apples and fry the pork in the glaze. Add some broth and sage and mustard. Oh, he's gonna fuck this up big time. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it's gonna come out horrifying. I wake up invigorated by the idea of seeing Rannick after this arduous week. I mean, I'm not going to complain. I'm sure trudging through the woods to reach his missing packs was much more of an adventure than me serving one lunch at his dad's place. But still, today we're out of, we're out of the limbo. Oh, oh, God, there's a hair. Oh, oh, God, there's a hair on my tongue. Whatever decision is, I just want to be brave. I just want to brave this storm with him at my side. Romance or no romance. Oh, God. <coughs> oh, goodness, boss. Oh, God. It's like every video I have a sneeze. What the hell? Yeah, allergies and such. He's perfect the way he is. Just a good friend. Anything else is an added bonus. As I rub my tired face, trying to recollect myself for the task ahead, something odd occurs to me. There's no stubble. In fact, as I glide my hand across the chin and cheeks, there's not a single hair to be found. Come to think of it, my fingernails are the exact same length as they were on the first day. It's been nearly two weeks. Surely it would have grown both the, I would have grown both the beard and nails. It almost feels like I'm not aging here, like a freaking elf. I chuckle it off, getting up to my feet. If within a month my hair will remain the same length, I'll have my confirmation. I don't suppose any of the wolves would find this remotely of interest. One, they're not familiar with humans, and two, they're covered with they're covered with fur head to toe. Good luck explaining facial hair. But at least I know but at least I now know that there's definitely something wrong with me. Whispers, accelerated healing, multilingual abilities, and now this. At this point, I'm hardly surprised by anything. Perhaps it's not the best reaction to a possibility that one somehow drank from the fountain of youth, but considering the wacky hijinks happening so far, I'd rather limit the number of abnormalities I have to focus on. Either way, Today is about Rannick, not about my possible superpowers. I rush to the kitchen and notice that, just as he predicted, the dandelion doesn't look too jazzy. I wonder if maybe, as before, a bit of a sun wouldn't re reinvigorate it, enough to at least survive until Rannick's arrival. Yes, I think I'll take it with me. Once I'm washed and dressed, I secure the flower in my pen, grab the basket from my shopping list, and get ready to step outside. Just as I'm about to leave, I remember Vool's advice and decide to take his token with me as well, just in case. Having no pockets, I simply slide it behind my collar to rest, to rest snugly between my skin and the leather strap. My, what a wonderful day! The birds are chirping, the sun is shining, the warm breeze gently caresses my skin through the airy silk. Everything is perfect with the world, just as it should be on such a joyous day. With a happy gait, I march onto the path and head towards the village, merrily bopping the basket side to side. As I do so, I begin to chuckle, realizing that my white dress and blue shawl are very much akin to Dorothy's outfit, so I decide to, so I decide to do her skip. One, two, shuffle. One, two, shuffle. And... Oh, no. I'm up! <laughs> ha! Oh, not the direction I thought this was going to go in. Off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. I hear he is the wiz of a wizard. Wherever was the... Ever, blah. If ever there... If ever a wiz there was... If ever or wherever there was there was, the wizard of Oz is one because... Because, 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 because... Because of the... Oh, God. What is the meaning of this? Oh, shit. Contrary to the versus prediction, Aldris and Drain are very much on the prowl, and they rush towards me as if I were on a four-hour fire. Why is this savage unsupervised? Complete lunacy! She grabs my arm harshly and pulls to the side, causing me to nearly trip. Scampering through the town as if he had just accomplished some mischief. I'm trying not to resist it, but she's pushing and shoving me every which way, and it very much feels as if I'm struggling against her. 
Be still, you pathetic whelp! Thinking I'm putting up a fight, the fatso drops his pipe and rushes to grab my other hand, and I'm becoming the proverbial rope in a tug of war. He's unwieldy! He howls while I'm getting more and more panicked. I'm doing nothing. It's just these two idiots pulling me in opposite directions. I can't stop yelps escaping my lips as they squeeze harder, putting pressure on my muscles and bone. As their labored breaths intensify and I can finally hear a growl, I want to shout out for help. But before I manage to do so, I hear Cora's melodic voice come out from the bakery. What are you doing? What's this commotion all about? Mind your own business and leave this to us! The pudgy female spits out, but I can see Cora is already in a fight-or-flight mode. Her entire fur is standing upright, and her neck looks incredibly electrified. This is my business. Your frenzied screeching could even make a sourdough go flat. We found this mongrel footling about unsupervised, probably looking to steal. Where are the guards? Leave him alone, she demands, physically pushing the male off of me. He's not doing anyone any harm. Get your paws off of him. Her growl was not directed at Aldris, who's clutching at me for her dear life. How dare you speak to us like that? Leave him be. He's simply running errands. Errands? Ha! <laughs> He's a savage. <laughs> He's running them for my father. The confidence in her voice even got me confused, but the other two have no means of asserting it as it is a lie. As the chief's advisor, he outranks you both. So unpaw him, you vile woman. She bumps into the female, trying to push her off of me. You pesky little bitch! I... Last time I saw you hit a pup, I let you off with a warning. But should you do it again, including with this one, I will maim you, woman. I've never seen her this determined. Her fury rivals that of Vool. Cora can be scary when she needs to, and it's clear her threat made Aldris step back, finally releasing my abused arm. Why, you... Dren shakes his clenched fist, squaring off with a tiny female, but she stands defiantly. She even moves her chin closer to him, narrowing her eyes in a challenging stare. Go on, touch me. I dare you. She sneers in a contemptuous tone. Just lay your paw on me and give me a reason to slit your throat where you stand. I didn't even notice where she pulled out a small dagger from underneath her shirt, her skirt. Dren also did not see that coming, judging by his complete shock. Why, I never! Well, now you have. Cora mocks him and sweeps her arm around me in a protective gesture. I feel both petrified by those old lunatic, by those old lunatics, and entirely taken by her defiance. Mark my words, Missy. I can make your life extremely difficult. It's not like you've been making it easy thus far. She scoffs, looking to me with a weak smile. Come, pet. We haven't finished. Well, I have. Listen here, you impudent. What's going on here? Aldris was about to continue the spat when both she and Dran jump up at Vool's sudden appearance. Thank God for him. Nothing unusual. Cora rolls her eyes, still very much tightly embracing me, drawing Vool's attention to my abused arms. I caught this old hag dragging another youngling across the street. How dare you! He's bruised. He states with a voice completely devoid of any humor, and then his empty gaze lands on the old-timers. Don't you have your own work to attend to? I do, but I've closed down the shop. It's not every day there's a, tr there's a troop of clowns in town. Both the old wolves nearly choke on the remark, taking deep, aggravated huffs of air. Do you think your moonstone protects you, boy? You all right, piglet? I'm... Oh, it's him talking, okay. I'm talking to you! But Vool is very much intent on ignoring him taking a gentle hold of my arm and inspecting it carefully. It's slightly bruised, with purplish imprints with where their paws held me. He closes his eyes, taking a deep sigh, and then turns idly towards Dran. The male is slightly startled, but Vool doesn't move or even says anything. He just glares at the old male. Wait, what's this? Aldris draws our collective attention as she, as she kneels next to me and picks up something shiny on the ground. Aha! I knew he was stealing! She exclaims in satisfaction, waving a silver coin in front of Vool's muzzle. It's your token! Where did you get it, you little thief? Dran tries to put, tries to rush me, but Vool blocks him with his extended paw. Most likely, when you took him to the butchery, he ransacked it. Thief! He's not a thief, Vool utters quietly. He's oddly calm and it unsettles me. No, not calm, he's emotionless. I gave it to him. 
What? Have you lost your mu- Ugh. Dran, that's Aldris, that's Dran. Well, they're, they're using a similar text color, so. What? Have you lost your mind? Why would you do such a thing? Because he earned it. He shrugs, lowering his arms and watch, snatching the coin from the female. How? It's a very funny story and completely none of your business. What? My tokens are my affair. I don't have to explain my dealings to anyone. Listen here, you overgrown pup. <laughs> With a simple shove, Vul sends Dran to the dirt and the rounded male bounces a few times on his rump. Mm -hmm. Aldris tries to fight to help her friend when the black wolf addresses her with his empty voice. How's Grandma Val doing? Haven't spoken with her in a while. You damned brat! You dare lay your paws on me! Perhaps I should invite her for a visit. He raises his brow at the pudgy female and she fidgets, fidgets slightly. Dran scrambles to his legs, glaring at us with ang growing anger. I will have you! Dran, shut up and let's go! The female interrupts him, grimacing uncomfortably. What? You're going to ignore this. We've got more important things to attend to. She nearly growls, casting her nasty gaze at Vul and then giving each of us a taste. As she leaves, Dran decides to slam his shoulder into the black wolf, but instead of achieving his desired effect, he bounces back like a bumper car, causing me to snort. How is this lunatic still alive? First he starts with Vithyr, now Vul. Plenty of eyes about. This will become a talking point of the next few feasts. Better let's get off the road. Hmm. Wool murmurs, locking his red irises with me. Cora leads us into the bakery, and before I could admire their cozy domicile, Wool grabs my arm sternly and snarls at me. What the fuck, Piglet? You were supposed to stay put! I almost blurt out a protest when Cora does it for me. He was just walking down the road. How more could how how more put could he possibly be? As much as it would take a t take a keep as much as it would take to keep those two out of her out of her hair. For them, the only acceptable other kin being put is in a box six feet under. She sneers in annoyance, drawing a reluctant sigh from the black wolf, from the black male. His gaze softens, and he darts his eyes between the rattled female and me. You two okay? As okay as can be. She mutters through her clenched teeth and finally lets out a long sigh of relief. Sorry, fool. Sorry. Thanks, fool. She places her paw on his shoulder, causing the, male ta the male's tail to give a flick. I don't know what would have happened if you didn't intervene. No worry. He tries to act it cool. It's good I have a clear view of this street, eh? What do they want with him? I don't know. I was just making dough when I heard the shouting, and here they were, abusing him. Hmm. He croons, rubbing the top of his head. He's clearly troubled. Things are gonna get interesting once Rannick is back. I doubt those will disappear before tonight. The wolf nods towards the purple spots on my ar on both of my arms. Ugh, fucking shit show. Here, you lost it. He presents me his coin, and I take it with a slight embarrassment. Good lord, one second, guys. Okay, alrighty. He understands us, doesn't he? What? She catches us by surprise, and we both give her a startled look. I'm not dumb, fool. I've seen you and Varissa interact with him in ways you never did with any of the bunnies. I almost want to facepalm, but instead I simply exchanged an inquisitive gaze with Vool. I'm not going to betray you. You cannot tell anyone, the Black Wolf states plainly, to which she takes clear offense. Of course! Not even your father. Do I look stupid? She scoffs. I don't tell him anything. He's a chatty drunk. Good, because Rennick's life hinges on this, on this remaining a secret. If you wish for any future with him... I have my own mind and heart, thank you very much, and so does Rannick. She brushes him off. If he sticks his neck out for the human, so shall I. Fuck! I hate this. Vool grumbles in annoyance, pacing around the room, while she comes closer and takes hold of my shoulders. I hope you won't keep my earlier behavior against me. I didn't mean to be patronizing. Not at all. Uh, I'm actually relieved I can speak to you freely. I really appreciate everything you've done to for me thus far. <laughs> <laughs> Poor fool, he's losing his mind. It was nothing. The female looks a bit uncomfortable, but only for a moment, casting her eyes to Vool, who's still pacing anxiously. My, is it starting to see another can speak as fluently as one of our, uh, as one of your own, isn't it? Oh, one second, let me do this again, guys. My, it is startling to see another can speak as fluently as one of your own, isn't it? Hmm. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Pat. 
She musters a polite smile, but her attention keeps drifting to the pacing male. But we have something far worse to worry about. Those two geezers are not going to be happy about it, especially now since you've, since you've intervened. Seeing you involved with the, hu with the human, they'll start suspecting something. That bridge is already burned. Dren was asking me about that dress the other day. Why? What's it got to do with you? Cora seems thrown off. I bought it. You bought it? She tries to subdue her mocking tone. But Varissa, obviously. Finally, Cora cannot help herself and erupts in laughter. Whatever made you buy her a dress? Between her and me, I'm the one I'm the one shallow as a puddle. Yet you don't see me strutting the town in the latest tiggery fashions. It was a miscalculation. I say she laughs once more. A miscalculation would need some actual thinking process behind it. This is more of a hit and miss. Yes, yes, thank you for your insight. That's exactly why it ended up on Piglet. He waves his paw in my direction and she blinks. Piglet? That would be me. I smile, raising my hand shyly. Why are you calling him that? He's got a name, doesn't he? What's your name, pet? Uh, Orion. Lovely. She smiles widely and looks to the black wolf. See? Wasn't that hard? Ugh! I will call him whatever the fuck I please. I've been taking care of that needy little bitch for nearly two weeks now. I don't need schooling from a first from a part-time nanny. Ugh. I'm not sure if he's insulting her daycare duties or, or her brief involvement with me or both. And knowing Vol, he's doing both, isn't he? Seriously? She crosses her arms in annoyance, but I don't want this dragged out. I place my hand on her shoulder and give her a confident smile. I don't mind. Really, we've got more important problems than Vool's personal charm. She snorts at my comment and shakes her head. Yes, you're quite right. Since we, since we just told off two of the elders, I suggest we disperse. I have the pups to look after, and you've got your butchery to run. She nods to Vool when her eyes land on me. I assume that whatever your activity was, it's still very much pending. Yes, I was gathering ingredients for Rannick. I just don't know if it's a good idea now. Pish posh! You're not a prisoner, otherwise you'd be in the stockades. You're Rannick's ward. She pokes the crest on my collar. If you need things for him, you go about your business. Don't let anyone strong arm you. Those two act as if they own the damn place, but they don't. I hear Vol's strained grumble in the back. He's clearly getting <laughs> agitated. Ugh! You have my coin, just show it, if any of the guards give you trouble. Just don't lose it next time. I'm sorry, I won't. I mumble apologetically, panting my, patting my dress. I don't have any pockets, so I just kept it under my collar. It must have slipped. Vool rolls his eyes in annoyance, while Cora bobs happily as if struck with an idea. Oh, that's easily sorted. The female quickly rushes to the back, back of the room, rummaging in the cupboard. She quickly returns with a small leather pouch. Here you go, love. You can tie it to your belt and use it to store trinkets. I look at the embroidered borders with a simple Celtic knot motive motif in the middle. It's beautiful. Are you sure? Of course. Rana gave it to me on my 16th birth and my 16th moon day, but I never really used it. It seems they both missed their marks with gifts, huh? I saw they become a repository for unwanted knickknacks. I jest, trying the pouch to my waistline and causing Cora to laugh. They try, bless them. At the end, it's the thought that counts. He made it himself, you know. Alright guys, I'm going to pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!